everyone, it's Kate from The Forward Line. I am back this week to talk all things sewing bee. If you didn't see last night's episode, um, don't watch this, go and watch it and then come and see this because there's lots of spoilers. Um, for those of you who haven't discovered us yet, uh, every week we hunt out some of the patterns or the patterns featured in the shows or patterns very similar to those featured in the show. Um, this week's theme was menswear, which was quite a tricky week in terms of the pattern hunting um, yeah, it was, but it was an interesting one. So the first challenge was a Baker Boy hat, which was really tricky. So I, in back before I did this, I used to make hats. And I didn't make cup and sew hats so much. It was more kind of, um, I guess, uh, occasion wear hats. But I have made some cup and sew hats and they're really tricky. I think they didn't, make it look as hard as it is. If you go off the seam allowance by a few millimetres it completely changes the shape of the hat so I thought it was a really tough challenge. In terms of patterns I didn't do very well on this actually I, I have to say I looked and looked there were a couple on Etsy for Baker Boy shapes but um, I wasn't sure what, how good they were so I didn't want to recommend them. The only thing that I found that's quite similar which I thought I would share um, it's not the same, but it's a sort of flat cap um, sewing pattern. It's the Vogue 8869. So definitely not perfect, but it comes with a, a trilby, a bucket hat, and a um, a flat cap. Just double checking. Yes, so it's it's four, three styles, which is actually really good value for a pattern. Um, if you haven't made hats before, they're actually not as hard as you think. You just have to be quite accurate. It's a bit like sewing lingerie. If you you know if you get it wrong it just really does change the shape but it's definitely worth a try so yeah I thought they did really well in that challenge and also sewing it in quite thick tweed also is tricky. So the second challenge what which I, we don't find the patterns for because they're always quite crazy makes um, was them transforming suits into women's garments which I thought was a really interesting one and actually they did end up with slightly less bonkers things this week. Um, the final challenge was making a men's workwear jacket. I was really excited about this when I heard that that's what the theme was going to be because I thought that we'd get lots of menswear patterns, um, not menswear, sorry, indie patterns and um, I was a bit disappointed. I thought there were going to be more of them so it's a bit of, I really thought we were going to have a full indie spread this week but sadly not. But I have found most of them, so I was quite pleased with myself. Right, so I'm going to get cracking. So I'm going to start with, um, there was one pattern that three people used. So Adam, Catherine and Adina all used the same pattern, which let's be honest, as person hunting out the patterns, I was quite delighted um, as each because um, they show the line drawing so it's each time it came up I was like that's the same pattern that's the same pattern um, so they used the three pattern their pattern was a button down it always looked like a shirt if you're looking at a line drawing button down the front stand proper collar patch pockets on the chest patch pockets below the waist the thing the sort of defining feature that was the thing that was easy for me to hunt out was it had this elasticated or like a drawstring or elasticated, I couldn't quite, I think you could opt for both, um, channel just to wear exactly on your waist. So the pattern for this, it's a Mimi G1 for simplicity and it's a 9052. They actually, when you look at the, I'll show you the line drawing so you get a proper idea, they actually didn't stray too far really from um, the original jacket. Um, they kept most of the details. There's obviously an option with this that you can make it into a longer parker as well, or kind of parker style or longer sort of style jacket if you want. And there's a hood option, which I think is really nice added extra. But I mean, it's, uh, so yeah, I was just so chuffed with this because this one, I'm 99% I'm sure this is right because I looked through everything else and there was nothing else similar. And I think it's a really lovely pattern. So if you're thinking about a menswear pattern and you're thinking about a utility sort of jacket, then this would be a really good one to go for. So next up, we've got another scenario of two people using the same pattern. So we've got um, Fairy and Loretu. So they 
um, their pattern was, the thing that really sort of defined their pattern, and actually I haven't spotted this, Rachel spotted this, was the pocket shapes. So when I show you the line drawings of the pattern that I found, you'll understand what I mean. It had these really interesting sort of slanted um, pockets on the chest and kind of on the waist or below the waist. It also had an optional tie belt. Um, Loratu had that on hers. Um, Fairy didn't. She actually tweaked hers a little bit, and you can see when I show you the um, when I show you the line drawing, you'll understand. So her one had a zip up the front. It had a little mandarin collar. Um, so and it's straight cut at the bottom, whereas um, Loratu stayed quite close to the pattern, and it had the curved hem. Anyway, I'm going to stop wobbling and show you the actual. Um, pattern. So the pattern that um, they used was a bird of style pattern and it's the miscellaneous jacket 137. Um, this I love actually, it's a really nice shape but as you can see when I show you the pockets on the line drawing this is the thing that really kind of made it stand out. It's got this slanted, I, I'm not sure what the kind of technical term for that type of pocket with the slant on is but it had um, it almost feels like a mixture of a tailored jacket and a kind of utility jacket, which I really liked. I like because the, the curve at the bottom of the hem made it feel quite like tailoring. It's an interesting pattern. It's got little lapels on the shoulders, um, bot buttons all the way up to the top, and then there's an optional belt as well. So it's a really lovely pattern, actually, and it's... Um, I. It, the picture actually, because I haven't really used very many Bird of Stars, I'm assuming that the picture of the woman, there's another pattern for that dress, but I don't know what it is. But um, So I think that, was a, that one is bang on, so we were really delighted with ourselves for finding that. Um, next up we've got Serena's jacket, and I was really chuffed because I think this is an indie pattern. Hurrah! Hurrah! I'm pretty sure it is this pattern. Um, the unisex Ilford jacket is, I think, the packet pattern that she used. The reason that I think it's this one is, um, so her jacket had um, almost, again, if you're looking at the line drawing, always like a shirt, buttons down the front, quite a wide front placket. It had cuffs at the bottom of the jacket. Um, it was straight cut across the bottom as well, um, which was quite hard to find when I was looking at other ones, so I'm, I'm fairly sure this is right. She did tweak it. Did she? No, not really, actually. She didn't really tweak it. It's pretty similar to the original. So, yeah, the unisex Ilford jacket from Friday Pattern Company. This is such a fab pattern. Buy it, and you can make it for you. You can make it for your partner, brother, father, whoever, friend. Um, and it also comes in a longer version as well. And I love it. I think it's perfect. And yeah, I was so delighted that we found this one. So and then delighted that she used an indie pattern. So next up, we've got Damien's cowboy jacket. I love the titles of the of all the things. Um, this one, I'm pretty sure I've got right. Uh, I did a lot of hunting. Um, so the thing that is kind of interesting about his jacket and I'll sh show you when I show you the line drawing is it's got this um, these sort of pockets that almost start at the shoulder so they they kind of come all the way down and then end sort of around the chest area um, the pattern that I found is a simplicity 8475 and this is for men and boys um, I just will show you the line drawing so you can see what I mean about the pocket so you have this really interesting detail on the, from the shoulder um, which he kept in. He also added patch pockets on the front, um, which was the thing that threw me and took me longer to find. But I'm pretty sure this is it because there's nothing else similar to this that's outerwear that is available as a pattern. So I'm I'm fairly confident on this one. Next up, we've got Ralph's shirt jacket. Um, this one was quite easy for us because they flashed across or panned across what he was cutting out and I saw the branding of the pattern company. It's an indie pattern company. It's wardrobe by me. It's the men's utility jacket. So once I'd seen that, I was fairly sure it was this pattern and I just went and double checked. Um, this, this pattern's got quite a lot going on, the kind of utility jacket. So it's got a sort of Mandarin style collar, or kind of funnel neck, I guess, 
probably a funnel neck is the better term for this. Um, poppers down the front. It's got this really interesting, and I love it, like seam line across the top of the chest, um, which Ralphs did, and he used this to colour block, which was nice, and it was it, it made it kind of interesting. He changed up the pockets on it, but I and there's also a drawstring waist which he also removed. Um, I have to say, if I hadn't seen the branding, I wouldn't have thought it was this pattern because he I, he really does like to kind of tweak and change things. But it is definitely this one. So, again, quite delighted. Um, next up, we've got Rebecca's Raglan sleeve jacket. This one again was a pan across, and I could see that it was a quick sew pattern. I then narrowed the search down using, which made everything a lot easier for me. And the pattern that I found, which I'm pretty sure is right, is the Quick Sew 4017. Um, if you see the line drawing, you can see it's very similar to hers. It's got raglan sleeves, which was actually really hard to find in a utility jacket. This was one of the only ones with a raglan sleeve, so I was fairly sure that it is this. Zip up the front. She's added um, sort of utility style pockets kind of patch pockets on the front which aren't on the pattern but it'd be very easy to do. Um, she did those pockets with a pleat in them and I can't remember what they're called. I should have researched all the kind of pocket names before I, uh, before I started filming this. Um, but yeah, so I was really pleased with that. Last but not least, we've got Andrew's Metal Workers jacket, which I thought was really great. And I loved the use of colour. He made it in a sort of dark blue and orange, which was quite striking. So some of the pocket flaps were dark blue and the patch pocket was orange, which was, yeah, really striking. So this one I really struggled with and I would love your thoughts and opinions because I have found something. I don't, I'm not sure this is perfect. So I would love your input on this one. So if I describe the jacket and then I'll show you what I found. So funnel neck, poppers up the front, um, two pockets on the chest, two pockets on the waist, the pockets on the waist were gusseted, um, a two-piece sleeve. The, the jacket that I found that I think, oh it could be it, it's hard, maybe it isn't. This was the closest I found. I thought that the um, Waffle Patterns Utility Jacket was pretty close. It had the funnel neck, it had the poppers at the front, it had all these different pocket styles which I thought he could have used. There's an optional hood which obviously he didn't put on. Um, it just, he shortened it. I mean, it's not perfect but it's definitely a good start. So if you know which pattern this is, please let me know because I am definitely, definitely struggling. Um, that is it from us this week. I hope you enjoyed that. We'll be back soon with another video and back next week with the next Sewing Bee instalment. And hopefully it'll be a little bit easier than this one, um, or this week's one. So yes, have a lovely week and see you soon. Bye.